In this video, I will show you how to install a free macOS alternative on a USB drive. It's called Pear OS, it is a Linux distribution, and the goal of this one is to look as close as possible as macOS. Down here we can see screenshots how this can look like. For instance, this one. It's really nicely themed with the dock at the bottom and the menu bar at the top. You would definitely trick me into thinking that this is macOS. Let's check out another one. Also a very nice screenshot. Here we can also see the global menu at the top. So let's see how we can install the full pair OS on a USB drive and let's try it out. Now before we start, welcome to the channel. Here you can find topics about Linux, Docker, game dev or software development in general or short agile dev art. If you like that kind of content, then give a like, subscribe and smash the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. All the links from this video are down in the description and also down there are the timestamps so you can skip any part if you want. As you could probably tell, I'm here on the official PearOS website. It says that PearOS is an Arch-based Linux distro, but this was not always the case. The previous versions were based on Ubuntu, but they moved away from it and rebased it on Arch. This makes PearOS more up-to-date, but they also give away the stability of Ubuntu and Debian. At the time of recording, many distros are moving away from Ubuntu because they don't like where Ubuntu is going, which is not so great in my opinion because Ubuntu usually has the latest stable packages which are well tested, but this is nothing new. The latest version is called Nice Core, and this one has a new installer, and it says that Nice Core is made to look different than the actual macOS versions with its own design. And here is a screenshot. So this one looks a little bit different than macOS, which is a good thing, but I can imagine that many people looking into PearOS would rather go with the full Mac experience. And that's also what I will do in this video. I will not go with the latest version, not because I don't like the design, but because the installer didn't work for me, unfortunately. So I was not able to install the latest version, and that's why I will go with the previous one. The first thing that we need to do, we need to download the ISO. So let's find it. Downloads. As said, I will not go with the latest one, but with the previous version. And here, click Pair OS. I will go with this version, Thick Sur. Download the ISO. Here it is. The image has 2 gigabytes. Download complete. And here is the ISO. Now this is the ISO with the live environment, with the installer, and first we need to flash this one on a USB drive. And then we will use this USB drive to install PearOS on a second USB drive. So yes, again, we will need two USB drives. I said again, because this is not the first time I'm installing Linux on a USB drive. For instance, MX Linux is ranked number one on DistroWatch, and in the previous video I showed you how you can install it on a USB drive. So if you want to install top-ranked full MX Linux on a USB drive yourself, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. As said, we will need two USB drives to install PearOS. The first USB drive for this ISO can be any off-the-shelf stick, it doesn't really matter. But the second one where we will install the full pair OS on should be a more faster one. So the second USB drive should have a decent read-write speed. Otherwise the whole system will be very slow and you will get really frustrated and it doesn't matter if you have the newest machine if the USB drive with the operating system is the bottleneck. So get a decent USB drive. I'm using one with 128GB and you can find the referral link down in the description. Now with that said, let's flash this one on the first USB drive and therefore I will use a tool called Rufus. This is Rufus, the official website. I always use this tool when I install Linux. So scroll down. Here is the link. Download complete. Let's open it. And here it is. Now plug in the first USB drive, the off-the-shelf stick. I will do it as well. Rufus has recognized the drive. Now let's select the ISO. Here it is. Open. Leave everything else on default and start. ISO image mode, that's okay. 
Now it says that this ISO contains an old UEFI bootloader that was revoked and that you will get a security violation screen if secure boot is enabled. You will need to disable secure boot anyways, so we can ignore this message. But if you don't trust this image, then of course, don't continue. I trust this one enough, so I will go OK. Now it warns us that everything that is currently on the USB drive will be deleted. So if you have something important on there, make a backup first. I don't have anything important on there, so I will just continue. My USB drive already contains multiple partitions, but this doesn't matter. Erase everything. And now let's wait. Finished. Close. The USB drive with this ISO is now ready, and now we need to boot into it. As always, I will assume that you know how to boot from a USB drive. But if you don't, you plug in the USB drive, restart the system, and while the system is restarting, you press one of the function keys. It's usually F11 or F12, it depends on your PC manufacturer. Then you should get the boot menu, and inside the menu, select the USB drive, and it should boot into it. I will do the same on my machine as well, and I'll see you after the reboot. And here it is. This is PearOS Live Environment. This is not the full PearOS, it's just for testing. So if you want, you can try it out and see how it looks like. But everything you do here will be reset after you reboot. I will first install this one. Now it's the right time to plug in the second USB drive, the faster one. I will do it as well. Now make sure that you're connected to the internet. So let's connect. I'm connected and let's start the installer. I will go with the defaults, so English is OK. Time zone, also OK. Keyboard OK. Now here, select the USB drive that you've just plugged in. In my case, this is the one. And select Erase Disk. If you want, you can encrypt the drive, but I will leave it unencrypted. And next. Here, add your user. And now, before I click Install, I need to mention that everything that is currently on the second USB drive will be deleted. So again, if you have something important on there, make a backup first. I don't have anything important on there, so I will just continue and install. And now let's wait. Installation complete, all done. Now we need to reboot and boot into PearOS. Again, you will need to open the boot menu and select the newly installed USB drive. I will do the same on my machine as well, and I'll see you after the reboot. And here it is. This is now full pair OS running from a USB drive. Let's try it out. About Parintosh. So this is pair OS Thick Sur. I like this overview screen and also the wobble effect. Down here you can see the apps inside the dock, and those are not the real Mac OS applications. For instance, the Finder is actually Nautilus. Here it is. This is the file browser that you usually find on Ubuntu, but this one here is themed differently. Then instead of Safari, we have Epiphany. Not many distros ship Epiphany, but it is a very good web browser in my opinion. So all of those apps down here are actually Linux apps. Only the icons look like they are from macOS. For instance, Mail, is Kmail, or Notes is Knotes. Those K applications you can usually find on the KDE desktop environment, and we are running this environment right now. Now what is actually Pair TV? This one doesn't seem to work. Let's check out the store, which is Pair Store. This is it. Again, here you can only find Linux applications. Then we also have Downloads which opens a panel, that's nice. And the trash can opens Nautilus again. Now let's check the console. I will click anywhere on the desktop and just type console with a K. And now you get the launcher up here. Let's go with console. Again, console is one of those KDE applications. Is NeoFetch installed? Yes, it is. This is NeoFetch. We also get a nice pair logo here. We are running the kernel 5.10. As said, this is the KDE Plasma desktop environment. And this one uses about 2.6 gigabytes of RAM. 
Now we opened a few applications, but two gigs is more or less expected for a desktop environment that has so many visual effects. And one thing I didn't mention, up here, we also have the global menu. Let's try it out. New tab or split view, or let's do close session. And again, close session. Nice. If you like my videos and also want to support me, I also have a Patreon page. I really appreciate all the support I get and it's because of your support that I can make videos like this one. So thank you very much and the link to Patreon is up there or down in the description. macOS is nice, but isn't there something that looks more like Windows? Of course there is. In a previous video, I showed you how you can install a Windows lookalike on a persistent USB drive. So if you want to run a Windows lookalike on a USB drive yourself, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. And that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, then like and subscribe. And if you really like the video, down there is a super thanks. So you can buy me a coffee, for instance, so I can make more of those awesome videos. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.